Hey, it's Craig Syracuse and welcome to another episode of Walk in Faith, the show where we go beyond the image and we discover who our guests really are. You might know them from TV, the big screen, or even the world of sports, but do we really know who they are as a person? Do we know what motivates them? Do we know what inspires them? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Today we're coming to you from the red carpet of Hollywood's newest biblical film, Paul, Apostle of Christ. And afterwards, we'll have the opportunity to talk to James Faulkner and Jim Caviezel, who play Paul and Luke in the movie. Stay tuned for another episode of Walk in Faith. Do you think films like this have the ability to unite people regardless of faith or cultural differences? Of course, of course they do. Of course they do. I mean, we see it all the time. I mean, just in the films I've been working with, in Soul Surfer, people cared that she was Christian, but non-Christians cared about her just the same and were inspired the same way and were inspired to be better in life in the same way. I think inspirational stories, whether they're, especially when they're driven by God, have deep impact on people, you know, because people want to do better in their lives and they want any edge that they can. And so, you know, when they can go see a film that inspires them and says, well, if I think in another way, maybe I'll be able to accomplish my goals and do better, you know, those are positive statements. I was, uh, I was driving up the coast with my wife and my uh, newly born daughter. We had $400 in the bank account and we were moving in with my in-laws. We had sold everything and God took us through this incredible trial to get to a point where he said, okay, now you're ready. Now I want you humbled and hungry and now go out there and do my will, not yours. You got Matthew, you got Mark, you got Luke, and here's a guy who's a pagan that's writing one of the, the, uh, the uh, gospels and, uh, and, and that, um, you know, that our Lord's message is universal and it can hit anybody, mm -hmm. that we all have an emptiness in our hearts. And, uh, and uh, you know, I, I, I actually, I saw, I had a friend of mine who uh, watched the movie who doesn't know um, he, he likes me as a person, but he doesn't come from any faith. And he watched the movie, and he was just blown away. And he said, hey, uh, Jim, the writer of this is brilliant. And I said, why so? And he says, well, that line, to live as Christ, to die as gain, is pretty brilliant. Yeah. I said, well, that was written uh, by uh, Paul. <laughs> and, um, and he said, oh, okay. But, I, you know, he didn't know anything about yeah. it. And then a couple days later, he goes, hey, can I see your Passion of the Christ movie. Mm. And I said, yeah, I'll go get you a copy. He says, I, I might want to see that. And I said, well, yeah, I'll get a, get you a copy. He says, well, hang on a second. I, I might want to see it. But, you know, he's right right on the edge. Right. And he planted a seed, and yeah, that's a big, big change. But, but he felt loved in the movie, and he felt home. And that's, that's all I wanted to, to convey to people is that, you know, uh, our Lord wants them to feel home with them. And that... Uh, he, he is. Uh, he, he loves them and wants to uh, give them the life that they were meant to have. These are the early church uh, members of the Christian church that were being persecuted both in and around Jerusalem as well as in Rome when Nero came to power. And we saw that these themes uh, are really kind of timeless and kind of have parallels to where we are today. So T.J. Burden and Andrew Hyatt, T.J. is our producer and Andrew Hyatt is our writer-director, uh, brought the idea to us at Affirm Films at the end of the film uh, to really kind of focus in on the on the element of that story and let's dedicate this film to people that even now and today are being per persecuted for their faith, not just Christians by the way, people that are being persecuted for their faith around the world of different faiths and so uh, we thought it was a great idea and embraced it and, and uh, dedicated the film to it as well. I think it's important that we um, not be complacent to the fact that there are so many who are persecuted for the faith, who are giving everything they possibly can to stay faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ. And we have to remain faithful to them by remembering them and keeping them in our prayers. You know, God spoke to Paul on the road to Damascus, so we sort of, he understood what his plan was for his life. How do we know we're following God's plan and not our own desires? Like, how do we know this is all part of God's plan? Good question. I think you've got to root yourself in prayer. I mean, I think, you know, if you're going to be a sold out follower of Christ, you got to do the things that will keep you connected in a relationship with him. 
um, talking with them, you know, and, and 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 putting people around you who will journey with you, not 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 an isolated island, but you have people, mentors, and others who you can bounce things off of and living in community and 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 all, doing all the things that we have as gift that are available for us, the sacraments as Catholics, to be able to go and receive the Eucharist and rec reconciliation and. I mean, all those things that God is just saying, there's, there, you know, it, 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 with logic, there's no reason why we shouldn't have a good connection with them. There are all these gifts are there. And I, I think, you know, the, the only way I'm going to ever know what God is asking me to do is if I'm communicating with them in a constant conversation. So I watched your audition tape on YouTube. The scene where you speak to your husband about your daughter who is, you know, you find out she's about to die. How did you draw up that emotion? How did you make that emotional connection to the character? I can't believe that you saw that. Wow. Um, <laughs> how did I bring the emotion? Well, I've been studying as an actor for a very long time, and I just understand that what she was going through is extreme loss, and and the need for love, and the need for hope and connection. And I think that we all go through that in our lives, and we're very good at masking it. So for me, it was just about relaxing everything, and trusting, and, and being courageous enough to allow people to see who I really am, who, what my vulnerability really is, and, and let out the rawness of it, and let that be cathartic, and let that move people. And when I was able to sort of give it a reason, it made it much more easy to just let it out. And then when I was done, after we shot that day, where it was the big emotional stuff, no, I was high on life. I was like, yeah, I was so giddy and yeah. Cause I felt like I really did it. I felt like I accomplished something. I contributed to the film and. It was a memorable scene. It's usually, because I've studied acting, emotional preparation, usually you're just, you're, you're gone. Like you just, you know. Yeah, I mean, I was definitely tired by the end end of the day but there was like a good hour or two when I was like just high and happy and just excited that it, I that we all did it and we did it in time we didn't go over schedule we were right there I was like in the zone the whole time they're all like 10 people grabbing at me fixing my hair putting more blood and and doing certain things and I'm just sort of was in a meditative zone focus extreme focus and concentration and just I did it for the work, you know, that's what we work for. I've worked my whole life to be a great actress and I'm hoping that that's what's happening. <laughs> well, when I first saw the film, in, in, not in a final edit, I didn't really see myself there, you know, that there, there had been a form of transformation, I guess, and I don't think you can avoid that if you play Paul. And Andrew Hyatt, the director, who's also the writer of the screenplay, is so faithful to the to scripture and so understands Paul's inner nature Edu he was educated a Jesuit I was not I'm, I was brought up in the Anglican faith that uh, it has changed me and for the better and I would hope to be able to uh, continue to grow as a person God spoke to Paul on the road to Damascus so he knew sort of what God's plan was for his life how do we know we're following God's plan like how do you know this is all part of God's plan and not our own sort of desires well, I uh, swore off that I would never make Bible films and I would never make a Christian film. <laughs> and, and growing up in the church, that seemed like the worst thing to me to be doing. And yet, you know, here I am and God really took a hold of my life and, and said, you know, I want you to use the talents I, I gave you uh, for my purposes, not for yours. And so um, now we just trust. We trust that this film will move people and it'll be um, something that just helps them. Sometimes creating content for the church, sometimes it, it's going to have a negative and a positive effect on your own faith unless you're deep-rooted. How do you sort of stay firm in your faith when you're doing films like this? It's, you know, we're, we're I would say we're in a little niche here, a niche that's um, it's certainly in an environment where um, there's, you know, it's, a, it's, it's more of a faith setting. Um, but we're also not doing our films going, okay, Lord, you got to bring us all the Catholic people together. I mean, our films, it's, 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 we're like, Lord, who can we love on? Who do you want us to love on and be around? And so... Um, it's it's just a matter of you know standing firm on who you, who you know you are, what, but loving the person who maybe has a different opinion than you do or an understanding of who God is, but just knowing being rooted in the fact that I know who I am, you know, and I know who you are and what you've called me to do, and and what do you want me to do to love those around me, you know? And we're all searching for something, and these films have the ability to reach them. Look, I, and I guess I said to one of the women down there a week ago, I was flipping through the TV and I, I came across Rudy. We made Rudy 25 years ago. 25 years ago I worked on Rudy. So that means 25 years from now, somebody's gonna watch this movie 
and be inspired by it the way we're still inspired by Rudy. Do you, I mean, Paul's teachings are still relevant in today's society. Do you think this film will resonate with uh, believers and non-believers of the faith? I think we certainly hope that this is a, a, can be used as a tool, you know, that you could bring people that maybe you feel uncomfortable preaching the gospel to, you know, co-workers, friends, family that have walked away or something like that, because I think that it's such a human story. I think, you know, the, the Roman character in the film played by Olivia Martinez, you know, he's going through such uh, normal human drama that I think it can really resonate. Um, and what we really wanted to always make sure is uh, everything on screen, that there was never a moment where you sort of rolled your eyes and said, oh, okay, there's the cheesy Christian moment, I get it. But instead, you know, it all comes from a very lived experience and a very authentic experience. So that hopefully, even if you don't believe, you could still sit there and at the end of the film say, whoa, like, that's cool. I didn't know that that happened. I've been an actor for a great many years now, so uh, if the script is good, uh, then your job is done for you. You have to remember that in the beginning was the word, and for me, a professional actor, the word is the script that I'm presented with, and uh, it's beautifully written. Mm. How did this come about now? They were looking for someone to play Paul, and I, I know they saw a lot of people, and uh, they they cast I, somebody else, and uh, who wasn't at the last able to do it because of, 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 he had other commitments, and uh, I was uh, thrust upon them in a sense by my manager, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, it, it kind of worked out in the end, and uh, I, uh, I had an extraordinary experience, and. Uh, Found, found that I was transformed by what uh, Andrew Hyatt uh, had written, and he is the director of the film as well, and I think he's made a beautiful film, and a film that is not exclusively for, for uh, the devout or, 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 or for followers of the Christian faith. I think it's a film for all mankind, and uh, important uh, core strengths of, of humanity are reiterated in the film. Agreed. And uh, we, all of us, might lead a better life and be more appreciative of our fellow human being should we see this film and be reminded. I agree. And then you, you mentioned about the experience, and you could see just in your eyes a, a lot of the scenes where you sort of were like, it was just such a connection to, like as if something was happening to you internally. It did happen to me internally. What happened? I, what can't, deni I can't deny it. I was, I am changed. and. Uh, 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 transformed by having had the experience of playing Paul. Who knows the next role I undertake may be, may, may attempt to take that out of me. Uh, I, I remember my wife saying it's very difficult knowing who's going to be at the end of the dinner table, <laughs> depending on the role <laughs> that I'm role playing. Because play. sometimes you know they they adhere to you and you're stuck with. With, with a character, if it's a particularly <laughs> strong character. <laughs> do you think that people, I mean, for me, I'm a, I'm a devout Catholic, but do you think, the, say, the average person will be able to make that connection to Paul's teachings and use it in their everyday life? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is not uh, just exclusively for Christians or for the Catholics, the Catholic faith, or indeed uh, the Anglican faith, of which I was brought up in. This is a film for all mankind. And uh, we all need to be reminded that we should accept other people and love our fellow human being and, <laughs> and not criticize them, ridicule them, or persecute them for their beliefs. Extraordinary idea. I agree. To punish people for their beliefs. No. And that's why this film was important during these times, especially. Yeah. There's a lot of persecution going on in the world. Still. Mm. 2018. Still going on. And people are being persecuted for their faith. For their faith. It's amazing. One of the things, too, which we mentioned before the interview was, you know, Paul was such a strong man. You know, there are people that say that he was a boxer based on some of his scriptures. Um, and we know what his noble purpose was. What do you think your purpose is? Like, what, do you, what motivates you in your career and your daily life? Oh, that's a really difficult question to like, answer. What's your why? What, like what my why? Why do you My why up? is to do as much for my family, my wife and children as I possibly can. You know, that's the great thing about having a family, is, is that you become much less important. Mm -hmm. I'd like a few more toys. We all like toys. <laughs> I enjoy my work. I enjoy my work possibly more than I've ever done now. 
in, in my later years as an actor. It's not, it's not so agonizing anymore. I'm not so concerned about, unconcerned about ambition, really. I love working with other people, uh, the camaraderie of working with other people, working with young people. I learn from younger actors and different, you know, the new and different styles of acting. And I, and I hope that I continue to evolve as a performer. I've been a performer, I guess, since I was seven years old. Not, not in a professional sense, but I was trained as a chorister at Addington Palace at the age of seven and so got used to uh, being at the sharp end of the choir <laughs> as a boy soprano, not a treble, a boy soprano. And uh, I've been incredibly lucky that I've managed to stay a performer for, oh, I can't, actually, I don't want to put a figure on it. <laughs> 20, 20, 30 years. I'm a time lord, and I will continue <laughs> to perform. <laughs> oh, thank you. This has been great. It's really, it's, it's an honor to meet you. God bless you. and. Hope you continue that journey. Bless you. Thank God you very you. much. God bless you. Thank you so much. It's great chatting with you. Uh, film is amazing. I mean, I've been a fan ever since the frequency and the passion. How do you prepare for these roles? Like, how do you make that connection, the emotional connection to the characters? I always believe that God guided me. I know that he guided me in this business from the get-go. Um, sometimes it's a in a way it happens by like say for example we were talking about the thin red line and how Terry Malick found me at the right time and I didn't even fully understand all of what you know how to make a movie and, uh, and everything I was very uh, naive and everything but he was able to um, uh, get the best out of me at that time and uh, it was a remarkable time it was like going to camp and this movie happened at a really dark period because my, um, one of my best friends, my lawyer of 21 years, even before I knew uh, Terrence Malick, uh, he'd been with me and he helped me find my children. We adopted him from China, he came with me to China. He got cancer and uh, died. Uh, mm -hmm. Before he died, he um, was with me in Poland and I went to Auschwitz. It was very haunting um, uh, and that really st stuck with me and then I, I uh, learned quite a bit of what ISIS did to some Christians um, uh, on uh, um, Good Friday of last year. They cru literally crucified them. And this f came across my desk. I read it, and um, and I mentally, I immediately thought, "There's a, there's a mentor relationship here. Um, father son, like Terry, was a mentor to me." Mm -hmm. Terry Malick, and that's the relationship that uh, Frank was to me, and then I saw that uh, him being that relationship to Luke. So I, I took this, this film really started, this happened through a personal experience. Um, I was able, able to expiate my suffering of, of losing someone close to me, but I do believe in the hereafter. And uh, I was able to uh, um, use that suffering in, in a good way in the performance and so that the world will know a lot of, about Paul. Paul is a really, really important character for, uh, for God. Do you think, because uh, I mean, I was inspired by Paul and his teachings, do you think people will be able to sort of connect to the movie and use his teachings in their everyday life? They're going to be able to do it with this one because, um, you know, uh, I wasn't a great reader growing up. A lot of times I would read the Bible and say, well, what's this mean? But other stuff that I would read, I would say, oh, that, it, it, it hits you from uh, any child would understand. Um, this movie, the, the, what I was looking for was um, human emotion, humor, things like that, that um, you can just kind of layer in pieces that, that, that we like these characters. Mm -hmm. And once you care about them, it's just easier to listen as a, as a moviegoer. Um, uh, I always think about what the audience will be watching and then I always see myself as the audience member what will satisfy me and if I was a, a, a great chef I would want to satisfy you as being your cook so <laughs> I, like that. I like that I think about that when directing last question um, you know God spoke to Paul on the road to Damascus, and sort of he knew what his plan was. How do we know what our plan is? Like, how do we know what we're doing is sort of God's plan and not our own desires? 
in reading this story, I, the, the, I, I thought of it back where when Stephen um, w said, I see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Father. And it just said scriptures, you know, he's taking their jackets, probably handing them a rock, and they're murdering him. But at some point, he must have seen the reflection of Christ in, in the peace that he felt in uh, Stephen's eyes, and that was the beginning of the collapse. This, I can tell you how this film will affect you. It can turn a light on in you, mm -hmm. where there was a lack of hope there is now, and that there is darkness in your life. I, we have, uh, there is a lot of darkness out there, and that Christ operates his very best in the worst of conditions. And that right there will give you great peace, and that right there will let you know that evil is powerless if the good are unafraid. That's great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Always remember, we have the ability to inspire and evangelize through our words and actions. Till next time, thanks for walking with us.